The best way to think about what a muon is, is a heavy electron. So most of us have heard of electrons, but the muon is just the same charge, the same idea of electron spin, is just now for a heavier particle. So electrons are stable particles, so we have electrons all around us. Muons are unstable and decay, and also produced from cosmic radiation. It's protons coming in from the sun. These protons hit our atmosphere, and then the muons are created, and they come down to Earth, and we can actually generate them inside of a lab. And this is what's done inside the Fermi experiment, as well as many other experiments using muons for spectroscopy and understanding materials and matter around us. Muons are formed um, when cosmic rays, these are protons coming from the sun, the sun emits material, so when you have these coronal ejections, and these solar winds come towards Earth, and they interact with our atmosphere, and as they interact with our atmosphere, these muons are created inside of a cosmic radiation. And this is where they were first discovered, and again, as I mentioned, they can be um, generated inside of lab conditions now. So, um, this is a really interesting question. The announcement came out uh, the day before we were discussing the electron spin g-factor. So the experiment that was confirmed recently was the muon G2 uh, experiment from Fermilab, and they discovered a discrepancy from what was the theoretical calculations. The theoretical calculations for the same g-factor for the electron was the subject of the 1965 Nobel Prize, and in that they found that the g-factor of the electron was slightly off, and this g-factor of the electron, this anomalous uh, magnetic moment, was calculated using quantum electrodynamics, using very sophisticated mathematical techniques. Um, and what people have discovered was that the muon corrections are not consistent with what they expected to find from the standard model of physics. So this is actually interesting because this was already known. This is just a confirmation of the discrepancy uh, based on recent data. In our Physics 40 class, the quantum physics of matter, we discussed the electron g-factor the day before this experiment was announced. It was very exciting to be able to take our discussion of the g-factor inside of class of the electron g-factor and its anomalous magnetic moment to understand the anomaly of the muon magnetic moment, which is also calculated using quantum electrodynamics as well as other corrections. So this is really interesting because this gives us a really interesting way to test fundamental physics. So when we think of uh, physics, atoms and the gas around us, um, electrons uh, dictate a lot of the atomic structure around us. We understand a lot about the atoms. We talk about chemistry and biology in terms of the atoms that are there. If we want to understand the fundamental particles, we end up with a whole new table of particles that are going to dictate the binding of nuclear matter. And this understanding this binding of nuclear matter will hopefully allow us to invent new technologies, understand how to use these things for better science. As I mentioned, the, the muon is used for experimental techniques to understand matter um, and to do spectroscopy. So understanding these pieces of matter better will allow us to build better materials, to understand other engineering aspects of using matter. So this is one of the things that's really exciting going on to understand where the um, standard model of physics has discrepancies.